Hey guys, for those who are new, I'm Julia. I'm a first year computational physics student and a Linux enthusiast. And today I'm going to step away from all of that and talk about how I've learned to code. And that in my 30s is when I started and now continuing on into my 40s. So I've been doing this for the past six, seven years. Coding has been a big part of my life in the last three, four years especially and also a big part of this channel as well. And so I thought the people who are already here following me might be interested to learn how I got into it. And people who are new here might find valuable lessons on how to approach it. Because even though my background is in computational physics, but the things that I'm going to share today should apply to all other coding jobs, whether you're looking to learn coding to get into web development, software development, maybe ML, or maybe even AI. So whatever your reason for learning to code is, this video should be helpful. I'll share my coding journey, I'll share the ups and downs, what did go well, what didn't go so well, and, and what lessons have I learned from looking back at all the last six, seven years that took me to get to the point where I am right now. What would I change if I could go back, especially to my very first encounter with coding, and what would I do differently back then? So my first encounter with coding was back in 2001, so over 20 years ago. Back at the time, I just finished high school and went to the university to study physics. It was back in my home country, and back in the day, having a personal computer, at least back in my home country, was uh, a dream unattainable to many. And it wasn't even that common, I think, even in more developed countries. So naturally, I had no clue how computer operated. And the class itself, even though it was at the university level, believe it or not, we had to write programs using pen and paper. And the programming language we learned was Pascal. And probably the closest I've got at that time to use a computer was 45 minutes every two weeks or so in the computer lab where we had like those huge bulky computers and only three or four of them where we could use them for this limited amount of time to solve something like a simple quadratic equation. And that's about it. So this whole thing was my first experience with coding. And as I said, this was back like 20 some years ago. And then I dropped out of uni, so I never continued down that path. And then fast forward to 2017. So I was like in my mid thirties at that time and I decided to go back to school. And so that's when I, encountered coding again. And this was during the first introductory course in Python in my physics undergrad. So this was a mandatory course. So I didn't start my coding journey for the sake of learning to code. It was just a requirement for my physics undergrad. That's it. At that time, I didn't think that I would need this to do it professionally in one way or another. So it was basically just a tool that we needed to learn about. And so obviously I wasn't as invested initially in learning that, but then I slowly started to realize the importance of coding for anything that future holds. Nowadays, pretty much every science discipline requires coding skills in some way or another, being for automating tasks, visualizing data, performing calculations, and increasingly making predictions. As machine learning and AI are slowly taking over pretty much all areas of our life. So over the past six, seven years, I've programmed in several languages. I started with Python, then I moved on to MATLAB, a little bit C++, really not worth mentioning about, but it was still there. And then finally, I discovered Julia programming language and I've been using it for the past three years uh, extensively. But the road to get where I am right now in terms of my coding skills was not all roses. It had thorns too and it took quite a few years. Your journey doesn't have to take that many years. It totally depends on what you need coding for. For me, as I said, coding was a part of a larger thing, like my science degree and a tool that helped me to get further in my science uh, studies. For many, coding is the career choice for people who are trying to get into coding related jobs. And so naturally, if you're committed enough, it shouldn't take that many years to get to a decent level of skill. And there are plenty of people who have done this. I'm here to share what has worked for me 
and what I could have done differently back in the day in order to make my learning journey easier and less stressful. Now let's look back at the past six, seven years step by step to see how during that timeline my coding skills and with this my self-confidence grew slowly to where I'm feeling pretty decently comfortable with what I can do with code. Now back to my physics undergrad. So that first introductory Python course, I'm gonna be honest, this was breaking my mind. It was my first serious encounter with anything programming related and I struggled. I struggled immensely. I used every moment of time I could to make a little bit of progress on my homework assignments. I remember sitting in the parking lot in the car when my kids had sports practices and trying to write those programs. And sometimes I was successful, sometimes I was just banging my head against the wheel. But, <laughs> um, but somehow I managed to pull through that semester and get all my homework assignments done. And actually quite decently. But I still failed the final exam. And with this I failed the course. So something must have gone terribly wrong during that time. Now reflecting back on this, I think I know what went wrong. And so I'm gonna cover that as well. But first let's see what happened afterwards. So instead of giving up, I retook that class a year later. And also I didn't get an A, I still got a decently good grade. I got a B in that class and I was very happy with this. And even though my learning approach during those two trials was not ideal, as I realize now, but it still taught me something. It still taught me a lot about persistence. I wasn't going to let that failure define me. With four kids and being a full-time student, finding time to learn to code was hard. But at the end, I still managed to be somewhat successful. And I felt content at that time. And then I had no contact with programming for the next two years almost. Until my third year of physics undergrad. So it was during our honors physics lab projects where one of the projects was to program Arduino. In that project, we used Arduino Uno, the programmable circuit boards, and used basically a variant of a C++ language to write the code to program those circuit boards and collect the data, I'm doing some data processing. And then I had to write a Python script to process the data and you know do some plots and stuff like that. And I think it was during that time that I actually created my GitHub profile and made my first GitHub repository, which was about the Arduino data logger. So this was my next episode of working with code. So it wasn't like a linear learning process. It was more like a little bit here, a little bit there over the years. After that experience, my confidence grew quite a bit because I finally was able to do something that was actually really practical. And this is like one of the examples uh, of the projects we did with this Arduino thing. So now that little victory led me to something else. So in my fourth and final year of undergrad, I decided to take a course in computational physics. So in that class, we used programming language MATLAB and we completed four projects in total. So one was the Lorentz attractor and another one was about the butterfly effect. And then we had a final project in that class, which was about this topic. Um, so ray tracing methods as applied to plasma lenses and turbulent media. And we worked on it as a group of four or five people. And so I had my own part to write in that code and my own method to be able to simulate how basically the light from some objects in space gets lensed through whatever there is in outer space. Cause it's not just vacuum, right? There's space dust. So there is plasma, whatnot. And as the light gets through those things, it typically gets distorted in some way, but we use the data from the light that objects emit to being able to tell something about those objects. Like I'm not an astrophysicist, but the problem at hand was to use physics or physical principles and the knowledge of code to be able to simulate how the light gets through those things in space, how we will perhaps see it on our end. Anyway, this project took almost all, all of the semester or a good part of the semester to code, but we learned a lot of this because the whole approach of that class was that we were not taught how to program in MATLAB. We were told, this is the tool, here's your programming language, learn whatever you need to learn on your own. So here we were basically thrown into the hot water 
and tried to learn how to swim. So for someone who is very familiar with coding, this probably wouldn't be a big deal. Um, but for me, it was still a steep learning curve to be able to do something like that. But I never gave up. I asked for help. I did actively work on the projects. And honestly, this was probably one of those things where I learned one big thing. Learning from projects is the best thing you could do for your coding skill development. Because here you're actively learning how to do it instead of passively learning about it. You actually learn only the bits and pieces that you need to complete your own project. Because first and foremost, we had to figure out the logic. How would we even set up this problem? And then we would worry about all the bits and pieces, uh, the language itself that we would need to use to achieve our goal. And so you will only end up learning the parts that you actually need. And that is no different from whenever you're learning something uh, in math or physics. The best way to learn is to jump right into solving a problem and then figure out what kind of information you need to be able to solve it. Um, at first we were like, what? You're not gonna teach us MATLAB? Uh, but then at the end of the semester, like me and my group, we ended up with an A plus in the project. And so besides that, everyone had to also do a presentation on how exactly the project was set up, how the code worked and stuff like that. So you had to understand what you were doing in order to be able to present something like this. And so this was, I would say, the decisive moment where I realized that yes, coding is hard, but if you have the right approach and if you have a problem at hand that is interesting enough, you can do it. It's, it's just a matter of time until things start to click into place. And you also have to give yourself some time to process the information and just be patient with this. Focus on one thing, learn by doing actively and just be patient and things will start to fall into place. Now, the next episode where I encountered coding was the following summer when I joined a research group that worked with computational uh, physics projects. And I was assigned with a task to help with the data visualizations and this is where I also learned the basics of high performance computing and parallel computing and also encountered Linux for the first time. But all that being said, I think without that success in that project-based computational physics course, I wouldn't even be able to get into that summer research program as well. And I think this maps quite well onto industry type of jobs. In order to get a coding job, you need a portfolio of projects to show for. And this was something that served as my portfolio at that time, those four projects we did during that class. And then later during my master's program and now in my PhD, I'm using even more complex concepts in coding like GPU programming, uh, kernel GPU programming, and starting to learn basics of machine learning. The progression was gradual, but I'm happy with how it went and one of the main takeaways I want you to hear is that, based on my own experience, this whole process of failing a class, then getting a B, which is okay, and then getting an A plus in a more advanced computational class, and then finally getting onto something more serious, because now I'm using coding, you can probably say professionally. The whole progression just shows that failure is part of the process, and you should not be discouraged by setbacks when things don't work out because throughout that process, throughout those growing pains, we learn the most. And that's often when we start to see the beginning of real progress, not to mention that your self-confidence will grow as a result no matter what. And you've probably heard it a lot on the internet already, is that project-based learning is the best thing you can do. Learn the minimal amount of theory that you can possibly learn. Like similar how I in the beginning had to learn the basics of Python and that knowledge, even though it wasn't the best knowledge that I've gotten back at the time, it still primed my brain for what programming is like. What is that all that is involved in there? Like what are the moving parts or the basic moving parts at least? And then use that minimal knowledge to move on to work on real projects you'll learn much faster compared to just learning theory passively. And if I would go back to my first Python course that I took back in the day, and what I would do, I would not just passively read this book. The one thing I did wrong during that time, because I still was able to do the homework assignments, remember? 
but I failed the final was that I never, never practiced, aside from the assignments, whatever I write here or on the internet. I would never do practice questions here. I would never try to recall it on my own and try to recreate those practice problems here um, on, on my own. So the only thing that I was doing in terms of active coding was working on my homework assignments, which I think we had like four or five, and that was it. Instead of, you know, reading and rereading this book, I should have taken my time and did regular practice aside, aside from homework assignments. I think that would have helped me a lot to not to fail this class. And now, with the rise of ChatGPT, you also have an incredible tool at your fingertips where if you have a problem that you need to solve, you can just take the problem, pass it on to ChatGPT, and ask not to code it for you, but ask how you should approach the coding. Because if you have no clue what to do and how to start, you should at least be able to recognize what you need to do, like step by step, what is the logic that is required to set up the code, and also what I would ask ChatGPT, what kind of concepts are involved and you should be familiar with in terms of coding, like uh, arrays, functions, that is structures, I don't know, what ills might be important. And then later, once you have this working, maybe also try to see what is the most efficient way to set things up. Because there are different ways you can go about coding the same thing. So there are more or less efficient ways to do that. And this also is something that as you grow in your coding uh, skills, you should start thinking about as well. So don't spend hours on learning theory. Try to identify what's missing in your understanding and go back and try it again. If you have to go back, go back, learn about the basic data structures, like what are arrays, lists, and dictionaries, what are functions, what are the conditional statements, uh, what are variables and their scope, and get those basic ideas sorted out. And this should be sufficient to get you started with some basic projects. And then you can build on that. Don't passively learn, learn actively. That's ultimately looking back at all those years that I've been on and off learning to code is that how I actually progressed so much is because everything that I have done starting from that computational physics class was project-based learning. I did not have any formal programming training after that introductory Python course. So now I've told you my story. I'd love to hear your story. When did you learn coding? Was it difficult? What was your main goal in doing so? And what helped you the best on this learning journey? And if you're someone just looking to get into coding, remember it's possible. I mean, if I could do it later in life, I'm pretty sure you can too.